Welcome back, everyone. I am the Depressed Dior, and this is Bandara on Tabletop Simulator. Decided to break this into two parts, so let's uh, continue on. Uh, this is the start of a new round. Uh, at this point, I am going to... It's not an easy way to do this. Yeah, you know what? I'll let the Murkhound just wreck Zeke. I think that's going to be the plan. Um, I could make them go last and then just deal with them, but reviving Zeke will just bring them back to half-life, which will be easier to work with in the first place. Uh, I also could have just healed them. Would... Oh, no, I could not. It would have been Zeke's the only one with a uh, mend right now. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Murkhound's going to go first. The one's going to shoot at Rook. Uh, Rook will attempt to dodge. All right, uh, two, so he's going to get 14 for his defense. 13, which misses, and then... Actually, Zeke has been spared, because this mark count's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And attack all of them. So it's going to provoke a break attack from Zeke. Zeke is going to take it. This time, he does have his courage, though it looks like he's going to miss. I'll intervention to reroll. Did even worse. All right, that's bye bye conviction, bye bye intervention. Um, I will go ahead and exhaust this to attack again. 13's a miss, and then I'll attack again. All right, 15's a hit. It's going to do uh, one damage base, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do seven damage to red. Um, I've already exhausted both. Uh, I've exhausted both of them, so I won't be able to heal from them. Um, and then during this, it's also going to provoke a break attack from Rook. I never remember to do the energy tokens on the Organe Blade. I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to do an attack. All right, I do get plus one to this. Uh, so that's 15 in total, so it'll be one damage base. And then plus two there, which is a total of three damage. Almost got the kill. Not bad. Um, it's going to attack in order by initiative, so it's going to attack Rook first. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I am going to go ahead and resolve the green totem, because I need to. Two forms emerge from the water, spawn two water loas uh, adjacent to the space this totem occupied. Uh, across the pond, one of the trees begins to stir. Spawn a grotesque effigy adjacent to the loot token on tile UM35, which is over here. So, I think there's only one type of grotesque effigy. Yes, there's only one. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of you guys. Put you down here. All right, and then we're gonna end up spawning, and then read the white uh, read the hidden text for the white objective. So the hidden text of the white objective is the ground just tears asunder as roots burst forth and threaten your advance. Replace each white objective token with a root stand up. And then I don't think I can spawn them. Nope. So I have to grab them. Where do I grab roots? I think they are in figures. Yep. One, three, four, two. Perfect. So we'll put uh, one up here. Making sure I got the positions right. One ends up here. One ends up uh, down here. And one's all the way tucked away here. All right, so those are where the roots are. Now we continue with uh, Murkhound's turn. Uh, Murkhounds are going to attack Rook first. 
So we'll start with that. Rook is out of stamina, so it's just going to be a raw attack. Alright, 15. Uh, I'm just going to negate it. And then... Actually, I can tank it. Actually... No, I, it's a uh, total is 15. It'll be 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. It'll do 5 damage if I let it go through. The big issue is the, the burst. You know what? I'll take the 5 damage. Let's make sure I did that right. So I have 12 defense on Rook. This is 15, so it definitely hits. Um, it will do... So 15, so it's going to be 3 damage base. Every Merc Hound's plus 2. So it's going to be, that brings up the 7. Every shield brings it up, uh, is plus 1, so that's 10. So yeah, he'll take 5, because he had 5 armor. Sorry, he has 6 armor, so he takes only 4. Um, then it's going to do the follow-up paralysis, but I'm going to counter with Organe Blade, because you can counter it even after you've been dealt damage and attack. Alright, I'm going to intervention that and see if I can do slightly better. Alright, 14 exactly, so I do hit. Or 15 because of finesse. Uh, so uh, it's going to do a total of 3 damage, uh, which finishes it off. Uh, we don't get loot because this is a spawned one from the uh, corpse thing. Alright, uh, then it's going to go to Murkhound. Murkhound's going to shoot at Zeke. Zeke can't do anything, so it's just going to shoot him. 11 is a barely a miss. Um, then it's going to go straight for over here. Uh, it's going to go this way because it's safer. Um, provokes an attack from Zeke. Zeke is going to take that attack. Alright, 15 exactly, so it does 1 damage plus... Alright, I'll do a total of 4 damage. And then attack from this. Uh, that's going to be 14, 15, 16 because of the burst. So it's going to be 2 damage and then 3, 4 uh, from the shield. And technically I did get a kill from the energy token. So I'll just bring it up to 5 just so I don't have to keep track of it. I mean at this point it should be capped out. So caps out at 4. So I'll just do another 3 and that'll take care of the... Uh... Now he has 0 energy tokens. Period. All right. Uh, with all that, it's still alive. It's going to attack Rook first. Uh, 13 to hit. It's going to do 1 damage base, 2 from being a Merc Hound by itself, and then it goes up to 5. So it's going to get reduced down to 0, and I'm going to counter with the shield to ensure I don't get paralyzed. And I miss, but that's fine. Uh, then it's going to go ahead and go down the initiative. It's going to attack Nightingale next. Uh, Nightingale has no way of dodging. Um, so it's just going to attack her raw. Minus one to this uh, because of the hindering train. So it does miss. Uh, I will go ahead and use the God Machine to counter. And shoot back. So 16, 17 because I'm not moving. Uh, so that's going to be three damage base. Uh, five because of Morbid Leather. Uh, 8 from sh uh, shields, 10 because of books, and then 14 because of the burst. So that will finish off that Merc Hound. So that is it for Merc Hounds. Okay, so that's taken care of. Um, now it goes straight into Grotesque Effigy. Grotesque Effigy is, of course, all the way back here. Thankfully, no one's adjacent to any roots at the moment. Uh, but it is going to start yanking people around. So uh, we're just going to roll... We're going to go ahead and do conviction checks for everyone, because everyone's at least within range 6 of something. So we'll start with uh, Nightingale first. 13, I think, is a fail. Nope, 13 is exactly what you needed. All right, congratulations. All right, um, I'll do Rook next. He's probably not going to pass. Uh, I'll re-roll with Nanorobes. Didn't do any better. Okay. Um, then I'll do Shalus. Shalus is blue. Uh, sorry, I have the wrong thing. I was not supposed to be rolling blue. It was supposed to be pink. It. She. It's supposed to be teal and purple for her now. So fails. Okay. So Nightingale fails. Rook fails. 
Then I roll for Shayless. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust her magical persona to re-roll a conviction check. 16. I mean, to be honest, I actually kind of rather be pulled, but I've already re-rolled, so she resists it. Uh, then Zeke. Zeke is going to be these two dice. Fails it. Okay. Um, so I'll roll a blue die. All opponents in our moved blue spaces. Okay. Well, all of them get pulled maximum distance. So it's going to be based off the closest one. So Rook's going to go this way. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it'll be in order of initiative, so yeah, I'll go that way. And then Zeke's going to get yanked that way. And then Nightingale's going to get yanked that way. And Shayless will stay still. Alright, um, nothing else to note for this round at, anyway. Uh, it's not going to do... Yeah, nothing's in reach two of it, so it's not going to attack anything. At least not this round. Uh, then it goes into water lowest turn we'll start with red red's going to shoot at zeke with a spell that'll be four um actually before that happens it's going to dispel his haste so it dispels haste and then we'll roll for a conviction here nine it's going to do three damage exactly and kill her uh, kill her isn't it or kill him rather yeah that's 10 in total and i got nine and I have no way of re-rolling. Oh, well, that's annoying. So yeah, it did exactly enough to finish her, finish him off. So when he comes back, he'll be at half health. Um, unless I force a re-roll. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and force a re-roll because I don't want to lose the heal tokens. So I'm going to use a... Uh, I'll use a Demon Voucher from Nightingale. All you need to do is not roll a 1. That's a way to make me... Uh... That definitely was a bit risky. Alright, um, so resist the spell. And then the second Water Loa is going to uh, shoot at... Move to be up to range 6 from the nearest opponent. Uh, so one step back to here. And then I'll be one, two, three, four, five, six to there. And then it's going to go ahead and shoot at him. Good luck. <sighs> don't suppose there's a way to stop that. I don't think there is. All right, not much we can do about it. Uh, so it's going to be 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, it's going to do enough damage to take him out. So tried. Unfortunately, I'm going to end up losing the ability tokens. Lose Zeke. Get him off the initiative. Uh, technically, it puts a water token there. Okay. Alright, so yeah, messy fight. Uh, then it goes to Rook's turn. Of course, Rook is adjacent to a root. Uh, he is not one, two, three, four, five. He is within six, so he can heal for two. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do from the grave and bring back Zeke. He's going to come right after us. And I'm going to put him right here so we can get flanking going. Actually, I shouldn't be doing that yet. All right. In any case, uh, should be getting should be getting four stamina because I'm hasted. Uh, I'm gonna spend three sta uh, yeah I'll spend three stamina to go ahead and attack and empower. We'll see if we can do do something with this. Nope, because I miss immediately. All right. Well, in any case, I'll give an intervention token to Zeke. Have fun. All right. Uh, goes to Zeke's turn. Zeke is going to get uh, three stamina. He's out of range of the uh, font right now. He'll give himself courage. Uh, 
and uh, he's going to go ahead and attack and empower and try to hit this thing as hard as he can. Also, one thing I could have been doing, uh, which I keep forgetting about, is after I successfully dodge an encounter, I can actually follow up with a one space move. But that's alright. In any case, I'm flanking, so this is 18 versus 10 defense, so it'll be 8 damage base. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 16, 17, 18. Uh, this thing has 6 armor, so it'll be 12. And these are from Axis, so there's no resistance, so that will kill this root. Way overkill, but I'm still happy about that. Um, I'll go ahead and exhaust one of the hatchets to heal for one. Okay, um, then I'm gonna go ahead. I don't have any stamina left, so that is it for me. Um, yeah, no one needs berry or anything like that. All right, uh, goes to Nightingale. Uh, Nightingale wants this route dealt with, so let's deal with it. Uh, so four stamina. Go ahead and activate this, see if I keep it. I do get one stamina. I, want it to, I do heal for one because I'm within the range of the font. I'll take a damage to go ahead and um, reduce the cost for my next attack. And I'm just going to attack the root itself. I'm not moving, so plus one to the attack. All right, this is 17, 18, so it's going to be eight damage base. And then 8 damage base. I'm going to not worry about the magic damage right now. So 8 damage base, uh, 11, 15. Uh, it's going to get reduced by 2, bring it down to 13, and then half for, uh, for 7 damage. So that will kill that one easily. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and quick blow off of that and attack a water loa. Again, plus one of the attack because I'm not moving. Uh, I will go ahead and flip this and go to 10. So this is 20 versus 11 defense. So it's going to be 9 damage. Uh, plus 2 uh, because of Morbid Leather brings it up to 11. So 11 damage in total. No other modifiers. Uh, that was my second shot. So I'll go ahead and... Fire one more time. Uh, that should have refreshed. Um, this will be a miss if I let it go through. I am kind of okay with that. Sort of. Well, actually, it would, it would still hit. It would do 11, 12. So it would do one damage. I'm going to masterwork this, so that'll give it another plus one. So that total will be 13. Um, so it's going to do two damage to it, putting it within the threshold to go ahead and do subjugator. And I'll shoot again with the subjugator. That hits, that will insta kill it. We'll go ahead and draw loot for that. Get 12 gold, putting us at 207. Okay, then I am going to God Machine. One, two, three. So I can get in range of everything else. Where's the current going to take me, by the way? Okay, towards the board edge. Okay, that's fine. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and shoot from here. Uh, I'm going to do a precise strike. Uh, I haven't technically moved, so it would hit if I let it go through. I'm going to re-roll the 5 and see if I get better. Technically, I did. Uh, 12, 13, so it's going to do 2 damage. Boink. Womp womp. Alright, and then I'll spend 1 stamina to quick blow off of that. Oh, actually, I'll brutal slaughter, so I'll do another 6. There you go. And then I'll quick blow to hopefully try to finish it off. Chances are slim. I don't have any read rolls left besides items. Uh, so 11, 12, I'll do one damage. Okay. 
Um, of course, if I had barbed arrows, I would be slaughtering these things, but it is what it is. I'll do like the shadows next to move two more spaces and go off the water. All right. Uh, goes to Shalis. Shalis will go to max stamina. She's kind of out of position at this point. Uh, I'm going to spend a stamina because I want to go and deal with the root. So, because the last thing I want this thing to do is teleport all over the freaking place. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll put her there. So, six, eight, ten. And you know what? We'll go ahead and go that extra step and get in range. I'll go ahead and do Fist of Polaris first. I can't miss. I literally cannot miss this attack. I do minimum 12. These things have 10 defense, so 14. So that's, yeah, 14 in total. So 4, uh, four damage base. Um, plus 2 from Morbid Leather brings up the 6. The sword combos will get it up to 8. And then 11... 16 so 16 in total um it's going to get reduced by six because of the armor goes down to 10 and then half to five uh i am not going to quick blow i'm just going to do a blade works next attack again and that will finish it off i'm not going to even do the math for it uh the courage alone will ensure that i get the kill so all that's left then is just that route down there and that's good enough for me all right so that is it for this round. All right, uh, Waterloo is going next. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to go back a step, uh, which I'm going to use that Overwatch shot and see if I can hit it as it leaves. I do hit it, it'll do one damage. Okay, then it's going to shoot back at her. I'm not going to dodge. All right, misses. I'm not going to counter. Uh, goes to Nightingale. Nightingale's going to go ahead and shoot back after healing. Uh, we'll just do Precise Strike. So, Precise Strike. Alright, that's... Uh, I'm just going to do Kill the Messenger. So that's 21, so that's going to do 10 damage... 15 damage because of Precise Strike, 17 damage because of Morbid Leather, so that's just going to kill her. And that's it for the Water Loas. Alright. 8 gold, we'll take it. 215. Almost enough to buy a rare item. Okay. Um, and then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just wait this round. Because, uh, I'll need to go full murder on the Grotesque Effigy once that comes around. Alright, uh, goes to Rook. Uh, Rook is going to get healed for two. Get some stamina. He's going to spend his stamina to move. Uh, he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And loot the blue loot. What do you got for me? Okay, you find the old remains of one rich adventurer. You find 50 gold and a random rare relic. So 50 gold puts us at 265. And here are rare relics. Okay, so this thing will give you plus 2 health. Uh, flip when you would be defeated by an opponent. Heal 1 and remain in play. Gain immunity uh, damage until end of turn. So not too shabby. Um... I don't really need Hemlock and Sarah at this point. So we'll go ahead and equip this and just get... Well, it's either that or I let uh, Zeke hold on to it. Nah, he's okay at the moment. So this will put us at uh, 2, 4, 10... Yeah, 24 health now. Okay, uh, not bad. Definitely no complaints there. Uh goes to Zeke. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, so Zeke is just going to go ahead and get his stamina's going. Um, he'll spend a stamina to move. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So 
let's see, that was one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to there. Uh, that way I can get interventions and proof of divinities up on Nightingale. Or courage, if you prefer that term. Uh, then he'll go ahead and spend that last two stamina to put courage, uh, haste on himself. Okay. He also should have gotten one stamina from uh, Shayla's because she's got courage and did damage. So I'll just use that st that st last stamina to get barrier up. And then I'm going to get dragged by the water. Um, it's going to drag me straight to the left by two spaces. Okay. And then he can start healing, hopefully. Uh, goes to Shaylis next. Uh, Shaylis is going to get a bunch of stamina. And then she's just going to move. Uh, I'm just going to spend all of her stamina on movement. Well, I'll spend four of it. So that'll be six, ten, uh, eight, ten, twelve. So twelve movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'll put her there. Okay. Uh, it goes grotesque effigy. Uh, has no targets at all, and the root, the remaining root has no target as well. So that is it. Let's go ahead and shuffle. All right. It's going to go Shayless. Shayless is going to get five stamina. She'll spend one to move. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. To there. And then she's going to get dragged by the current. Again, straight to the, uh, is it straight to the left? Yeah, straight to the left. Two spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just out of range. What about you? Just out of range. Okay, that's fine. So Grotesque Effigy is going to not do anything this round again, unfortunately. Uh, it's now going to go to Nightingale. Nightingale is going to go to Max Stamina. She's going to go ahead and activate God Machine to move three spaces with Flight. To go right here. And it's time to unload on this guy. So Precise Strike all right off the bat. Let's see what we can make happen here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use Intervention to re-roll both dice. All right, I'm going to re-roll the four. All right, and then I'll use Kill the Messenger to change that into a 10. Uh, the f thing has 13 defense, so and I get plus one because I have technically not done a move action. So that's going to be a total of 17 versus 13. So that's going to be four, four damage base. Uh, I'm going to do the precise strike damage separate. Uh, so four, five, six, because I'm more blue leather. So we're at six. Um, nine, 11, 19 damage so far. So we're at 19 damage so far. We pierced its armor. Uh, I am going to go ahead and use the black arrows so it doesn't get halved, and then I'll go ahead and add the precise strike. So it's a total of 24 damage on the first attack. Okay. Then I'll quick blow off of that. Uh, I'll use the infection and take a damage. And then shoot again. All right. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to end up missing if I don't do something about this. So that's 11, 12, 13. So I can do exactly 13 with that. So plus one. So 11 was the total, no and then plus one because I didn't do a move action, and then plus one for the masterwork. So 13 exactly. It does hit. It's going to be base damage zero. Uh, it's going to be three, seven damage in total. Uh, it's going to get half down to four. Not the best, but it'll do. Uh, that was my second shot. Uh, I'll spend two stamina to shoot again. All right, 14, 15, so it does hit. It's going to be two damage base. Um, five, seven, 11. So 11 damage. And that'll get half down to six if I let it go through. So I will. 
and then I will do a. Uh... So that was my regular shot. I, I'm not going to do brutal slaughter yet, um, and then I'll quick blow off the regular shot. There we go. So that's 18, 19. So that's going to be 6, 8 because I'm more of a leather. 9, 10. 13, 16. 20, 24. 30. And negate resistance. So 30 damage, which will kill it immediately. Bonk. Uh, I don't know what happens to the roots, but I. I think they I, they might actually stay on the board, but they won't do anything unless I bump into them. Any case, uh, this is going to get us five loot cards, so we're going to uh, do that, and then go one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that's ten, twenty, thirty. 49 gold. So, uh, 314. Okay. That's it for Grotesque Effigy. Alright. And then it goes to, uh... Let me check something. I might as well check it since I have it in front of me. Yeah, it doesn't tell me if it gets rid of the roots or not. It's fine. I'm going to probably blow it up anyway. All right. Uh, that is it for Nightingale. I will go ahead and activate her like the shadows and move two spaces that way. All right. Uh, goes to Zeke next. Zeke is going to get some stamina and some much needed health. I'll spend one to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, go ahead and reapply intervention. And that'll be it for him. Goes to sh uh, goes to Rook next. Spend a stamina to move. He'll go ahead and give himself intervention since he's by himself. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And then he's going he's only gonna get dragged actually he will get dragged too, because he doesn't have heavy. So drags him this way. We Alright, new round. Uh we did kill something, so we don't have urgency. All right, goes to Rook. Uh, Rook will get uh, maxed out stamina. He'll spin one to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll loot this and see what we get. Yellow objective. You dig at the dirt, seeing something shiny sticking out. Make a Perception 10 check. If you fail, you find a random, uncommon relic. If you pass, you uncover some sort of hideout. Okay, so we'll go ahead and roll this. So that's 9. I have plus I have 7 Perception thanks to the Augmented Monocle, so that's 16 in total. So we don't get the, the loot drop, but we do get to read something hidden. You crawl inside of the small patches until it opens up into an underground chamber. Place tiles, tokens and tokens according to diagram 26. After setting up this diagram, place your figure on the red objective, then replace the yellow loot token on the, with the blue objective token. This token is considered adjacent to the red objective token. A pit in the middle of the room drops to an unknown abyss. Beyond a strangely burning sconce, you can see something sparkling amongst a wall of stone eyes. There might be something worth scavenging. All right, well, it seems to be still continuing. <laughs> This is why we broke it up a little bit. Um, so diagram, it's at 26. Oh boy, we're going to have to go through all these pages. We hadn't had to use diagrams in a while. There it is, 26. Load page. 
So this essentially makes this the biggest map. Which is ridiculous. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to nudge some of this stuff out of the way. Try to make as much space as we possibly can. All right, and then go from here. All right, uh, that goes up here. So these are not connected even though they're it's just because I don't have the space to uh, really separate them. All right. Red objective. Green loot token all the way down here. And then we need a blue objective token. Right there. Okay. Uh, did it move me? Place your figure on the red objective token. So yeah, it did move him. Okay, that's it for Rook. Goes to Shalus. Uh, Shalus is good to go. So I'll spend a stamina to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and that's it for her. All right, goes to Zeke. Zeke will get uh, healed for two. Refresh his stuff. Uh, I'm going to spend a stamina to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll go down to here, and that'll be it for him. He's... He's, he's good for now. I don't really want to throw him at any more danger. Uh, then it goes to Nightingale. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get our stamina, get healed. Um, we're going to spend one stamina to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that was six, eight, ten, twelve. So don't want to go fourteen. All right, and then I'm just going to pop kill the messenger, or not kill the messenger, like the shadows in God, in the uh, God machine. So one, two, three, and one, two. All right, that's end of round. Uh, we didn't spawn anything, so it's going to give us an urgency, unfortunately. Uh, we'll just put the urgencies up there and uh, dive into next round. All right, Rook goes. Spend a stamina to move. Get out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We're going to go to there. So six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. My phone is buzzing. Give me one second. Accidentally yanked a cord. All right. Back to what I was doing. All right, so that is it for Rook. Goes straight to Nightingale. Nightingale's going to get a bunch of stamina. And let's see what we can make happen here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do God Machine. And then like the shadows to here. So that way I haven't moved yet. 
Uh, I'm going to spend one health to do the infection and loot the green loot token. All right, you begin scanning the walls, searching for anything of value. Make a perception check and gain gold equal to 10 times uh, the roll. After grabbing what you can, you turn to leave and are overcome with an overwhelming feeling of dread. Read the hidden text for something different about the dark. All right, uh, unfortunately, I have the lowest perception, so unfortunately, we're not going to get a Monty Hall out of this. But uh, here we go. Nine's not too bad, so that's going to be 11. So 11 times 10 is 110 gold, putting us at 424. If we had Rook doing this, that would have been... I mean, if that roll would have been another 5. Yeah, if, if Rook was the one that did the, the roll, it would have been another 50 gold, which would have been useful. In any case, let's go ahead and read this. Something different about the dark. A disfigured shape twitches and scurries in your direction. You hardly have time to react. Make an agility 10 check. Well, 14, so I pass. Uh, if you fail, end your turn. If you pass, continue your turn as normal. Regardless, place two tortured immortals on any spaces adjacent to you. Then place their initiative cards so they are next on the initiative track. So, let's go ahead and get the corpse collector out of the way. It's time for a new enemy. It's a new chapter, so there's going to be new enemies. Tortured Immortals. These fun these things are kind of ridiculous. But most of my builds were kind of designed to deal with them, so it kind of worked out. So two Tortured Immortals. Anywhere adjacent to me is what it said. It says any space. That's kind of funny. Um... Unfortunately, the way this works out, there's no way to get them into a pit unless you punched. Yeah, there's unless you placed a hole ahead of time, which there's only one web. Uh, there's only one item that does that. All right. So in any case, we'll put you there and put you there. Get rid of this. So tortured immortals, 45 HP, 14 defense, six movement, three armor. They have a casting die. They do physical damage mostly. Um, they have some reach attacks, and they have a bunch of abilities that allow them to, where you actually have to make strength checks. Uh, essentially, they will try to grab you and drag you all over the place, essentially. Um, the thing that's kind of crazy about them is they all actually attack everyone nearby, including uh, uh, essentially other allies. Um, they have provoke too, and uh, they also, whenever they are dealt damage enough to be slain, um, they remain in play, and they will not be defeated until the end of next turn. Um, and then each turn, uh, first time each turn, they will try to counter up within reach 2. Um, yeah, it has a built bunch of spells for pulling people. Also, it has the ability to move 10 spaces there. Yeah, they don't actually move normally. It doesn't look like... Oh, no, there's some normal moves, but on their final step, they move 10 spaces. So they're not something you can really avoid. In any case, uh, let's go ahead and deal with these. It's still Nightingale's turn, thankfully. So we'll start with a Precise Strike, aiming for the Tortured Immortal Red. Uh, I have not taken a move action, so I do have plus one to this attack. All right, 18, 19. So it's going to be five damage base, plus five from your, uh, Precise Strike, and plus two from Morbid Leather. So we're at 12 so far. Um, 13, 14, 15, 16 from Books. 19 from shields, and then 27 from the burst. So 27 damage from the first attack. There we go. Uh, I am going to go ahead and quick blow off of that. And shoot again. Uh, 14, 15, so it does hit. I do have armor piercing, so it doesn't matter about their armor. Um, armor piercing 4, rather. So... Uh, yeah, 14, 15, because I'm not moving. So one damage base. Uh, 2, 3, 6, 10. I'll do 10 damage. Okay. Um, then I'll do a normal shot. Okay. 17, 18. So that's going to be a total of... 
There'll be a total of 18. So there'll be four. Uh, five, six has a morbid leather. Seven, eight, 11. 19 damage, which is going to put it in death mode. Uh, so, as mentioned before, they don't die until the end of their next turn. But if you defeat them through other means, like the Subjugator, you can instant kill them. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Subjugator on it now. Alright, hits. That'll kill it. So that's one down. Okay, 14 gold. 4, 3, 8. Uh, I am going to go ahead and quick blow off of it and shoot at uh, the other Tortured Immortal. Okay, 15, 16. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Masterwork this to 17. That way I can get 3 plus 2 from the uh, Morbid Leather. So 5, 6, 7, 10, 14, 20. So 20 damage. Alright, uh, so that was my quick blow. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Doom Break next. Actually, no, I will go ahead and, since I didn't activate it earlier, Ambitious, get two, one, one, and one. And then I'm going to go ahead and shoot normally. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and kill the Messenger that five to a ten. Yeah, so... There you go, so 19 in total. So that's going to be 5, 6, 7, because I'm more of a leather. Um, 5, 6, 7, so 8, 9 from books, 12, 15 from shields, 23 from burst. So that's 23 damage, putting it at 43 out of 45. And then I'll just do Murder Circus, because at this point there's nothing left on the board. Alright, if you do, if you throw all the dice at the same target, uh, it'll only apply armor once. So uh, 13, 18, 20, I'll do 17 damage, which will be more than enough to finish it off. It's going to stay on the board. It's now Tortured Immortal, Immortal's turn. And it's going to... Is there an opponent within reach 2? Yes, make an attack against each fi other figure within reach 2. Alright, so it's going to attack Nightingale. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to dodge it with a Stamina. Okay, uh, that's going to put her at 16 defense. 15, just barely misses. I'm not going to counter. Uh, then move to the farthest space possible from opponents. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this would provoke a break attack. I'm not taking it because it's already dead. Um, all opponents who were hit by one of the previous attacks must make a strength 10, 12 check or be pulled 8. Um, I, I dodged the attack, so it didn't happen. Um, and then that's it. Um, then it dies because it's the end of its next turn. And we'll get loot for that. 8 gold. That puts us at 4, 4, 6. Alright. And that's it for that. So all we got left is the root that's in the way of the exit. Uh, goes to Zeke. So Zeke will go ahead and heal for 2. And spend a stamina to move. He's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10. There you go. And then he'll spend 2 stamina to attack. 12 is a hit. Uh, it's going to do 2, 3, 4. It's going to do 0 damage, though. Alright. Uh, and then... Yeah, there's no point in throwing, because it's not going to... It's not likely to breach the armor. Uh, then it goes to Shaylis. Uh So Shaylis is going to go running the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll see if we can make the jump check. I do. Okay, so that puts her there. 
and then that's end of round. No urgency this round. Goes the Rook. I'm not going to worry about Rook. I'm going to go straight to Shalus. Shalus is going to move into range and thwack this thing using pist uh, Fist of Polaris. 16, uh, so it'll be 6 damage base, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 16, uh, 21, 23, and then armor is going to kick into 17 and then half down to 9, so that will kill the root. Okay, that's dead root, and then it goes to Zeke. I'll just fast forward to Zeke and go to the exit at this point. Um, each party member uh, gains one experience point and then restore all adventurers. Um, and then Zeke, of course, will get some loot because he has a uh, thing, uh, a utility core. So we'll go ahead and grab. Uh, I want the BAMP tokens. Oh, the BAMP token and a demon voucher. I'll grab one of those. Okay. And then it goes straight into Into the Earth at 371. Okay. And it's a restore, so we don't need to worry about this anymore. And then, uh, yeah, we can just clear the board at this point. All right, so... Yeah, we'll be going to Into the Earth next. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here. It's been uh, quite a while, and uh, I'm pretty sure we have a lot of dialogue to go through, um, to no surprise. So, um, got to see Shayless in action. As you can see, this, uh, like I said, it's all about just not, not missing. Because once you miss, like, not only does it usually provoke something like counters, uh, but it'll also provoke things like getting hit with diseases if you're going against, like, blights. But the other thing that tends to be a problem is, of course, it loses you courage. And at this point, courage gets us an extra, anywhere from an extra uh, 5 to 10 damage uh, with the long swords, uh, which is huge, as you can see, because each hit will essentially do an extra 5 to 10 damage. Shaelis is easily be able to attack, like, you know, 7 times around now. So that's another, you know, 35 to 70 damage. Uh, so this is how this is why if you've been looking at the Discord and people mentioned doing 200 damage around, this is why. Um, so, like I said, I, I enjoy the build. It's a lot of fun. Um, I definitely like the Archer build. I like using the combination of God Machine with Light the Shadows. It gives Nightingale a bunch of mobility without actually giving up the plus one attack. And as you probably have noticed, every plus two attack is huge in this game. Um, so, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I am the Depressed Dior. This was Madara and Tabletop Simulator. I'll see you guys later.